It's almost the middle of October and we are rapidly sliding on our way down to Christmas. So I thought it was time to do another update vlog and tell you what was going on in September. So I came into September fresh from the August Quilting Challenge and on a high, having enjoyed sewing every single day. Work is still very much full on. We are preparing for a launch, the biggest launch that our company has had since we founded it nine and a half years ago. So it's been really full on and really busy. I haven't managed sewing every single day, but I have been managing to do sewing at least three to four times a week, which is a big improvement on what it was before. Yes, I would still like to sew more, but I will take three to four times a week over nothing. During the August Coating Challenge, I was making these exploded log cabins uh, using a pattern called Nonchalant by Natalia Bonner. Uh, so during September, I managed to finish those blocks get them all sashed and together, squared up and then sewed, and I now have two beautifully finished quilt tops. So as you can see in the picture here, they're both identical. They turned out really nicely. I'm really pleased with them. All that batch processing and chain piecing during the August Quilting Challenge paid off, and I now have these two lovely quilts. I've got all my wadding for them, and I have a massive roll of orange fleece backing for these. So in October, I have a week off, so I'm planning on getting some sandwiches made, which, you know, I not my favorite thing to do but I am going to be quilting these during my week off and I'm going to be trying out a serpentine stitch on my sewing machine just to see what it's like. These were originally designed for my living room but I have since decided that I don't like the color scheme. We introduced navy into our living room. It was previously orange and gray now it's orange navy and highlight color that's to be decided. So these are going to be going up for sale at some point as soon as they're finished and I have a nice orange binding to finish one of them and I have grey binding to finish the others. So I'm looking forward to getting those finished and seeing how that serpentine stitch works out. I have been in the last week very busy with my pattern writing. I'm quite pleased with myself. I am launching a skill builder series and I have the pattern written. It's finished and been edited and it's ready to go. So now all I have to do he says, is film and make the quilt. And I have two more of those patterns coming out this year. I have a Christmas stroke winter themed pattern. I'm very, very pleased with myself about this design. And then my third one, I just finished the coloring last night. I had originally done it in a red and gray color scheme, but I've now recolored it for teal because it's gonna be going in my bedroom. And that's gonna be coming out in December. So I'm very pleased that those three are done. Pattern one, as I say, is written. Pattern two, is all fabric requirements, cutting instructions, everything is all done now. I just need to do the step by step and the same for pattern three. And then pattern four, I don't know where all this organization is coming from, but pattern four is already designed with colors picked using one of my colorblind color palettes. And I will be maybe later in the year starting to work on that. But I'm definitely catching up with these skill builder videos. I had wanted to start them last May, but I'm getting there. So look out for that first one coming out and hopefully you will like that. I've also been working on planning and thinking about what I want to do for the videos for the rest of this year and then turning my attention to the start of next year. And I've come up with some really nice little ideas. I'm going to be doing a baby coat series, which I'm very excited about. And those are all designed and they are 50% done for fabric requirements and cutting instructions. So I just have three more to do and then I'll get started writing them. Then I have lots of other little things that I planned that are ready to go and ready to be filmed. As many of you will be delighted to hear my This Is How You Quilt It video series, I am back on track with that. I sat down to edit design number eight to discover that this little microphone here that I use for filming was inside out and so it was rubbing against my t-shirt so the audio was completely unusable from that video so I've had to re-record it. So that's currently going through the editing process and then I am going to get another four of those videos out this year and then they'll continue on into next year. The book that accompanies that series was supposed to be being released in November but I've decided that I can't do the book justice, rushing it to get it done in November with this big launch going on for work. So my plans have changed and that's gonna be coming out in quarter one next year. I think towards the end of February, start of March, which is round about the time that the video series will be coming to about three quarters of the way through. So it will come out towards the end of the video series if everything goes to plan. But I have been writing it and doing little bits of it and planning of it, just kind of keeping it fun, not letting it get me stressed out and trying to be as organized doing it as much as I can and possible. And I'm really looking forward to that book. And every time I sit down to plan it, I'm like, oh, I could do this and I could do this. And so it's starting to grow arms and legs. So 
I'm just reining myself back in a bit and sticking to my original kind of plan. And then my thought is once I've done that, then I can go back and say, right, let's add all this stuff on and do all these things to enhance it. So I'm really enjoying that. And I, I'm happy that I found a plan and a way of working that works for that. I'm also, I don't know if you know, Kristen from Scrap Fabric Love. She has an amazing channel and I'll leave a link in the description below that you can check out. We are good friends and we love chatting about YouTube and all that kind of quoting stuff that comes with this. As uh, so we've been chatting, and we've been talking about doing some kind of collaboration. Uh, so we were hopefully be doing that in 2023 and I'm excited to be doing that with her. She recently got a long arm machine. I'm extremely jealous of her. Um, what else has been going? Oh yes, in my last video, the learnings from my August Coke Challenge, I was talking about my sewing space not being fit for purpose. I decided that I wanted to vlog this journey because when I watch sewing and quilting videos on YouTube. I see all these people sitting in these beautifully pristine YouTube sets or video sets or quilting rooms and it always makes me feel like my quilting room is a disaster and I should be embarrassed about it. The truth of the matter is that I don't sew in a YouTube filming set. I sew in my office and sewing space which I'm very lucky to have in our house. But What's not working for me is the way that it's organized because I have fabric split into four different locations in the house. I have notions in one spot, notions in another spot. The room is really badly set up for storage. There's no built-in storage or cupboards or anything like that. So everything has to be stored either in boxes under desks or I have like an ottoman that opens up and has a storage compartment or I have bookcases. It's not a space that makes me feel the most creative because I walk in and think, Ugh. Look at this mess. Doing the quilting challenge, being organized and being planned, it made me realize that actually I need to figure it out. I need to find a better way of doing it, better way to store and organize fabric, a better way to store my notions, and a better way to just have things accessible so that they're there that I can pick up. So as embarrassed as I am, I am vlogging it and it's not a kind of video series that's just gonna be done in like a week. It is gonna take quite a bit of planning and preparation because there are lots of different options. It's kind of juggling between making the space usable and storage friendly, but also being able to turn it into a guest room if we ever need it. So you'll need to bear with me on that one, but and rather than waiting till it's all done, I'm gonna release it in chunks as I do bits and pieces of it. So I think the first part's coming out November time, which is, the sewing room realness that we'll be talking about in that video. Other things that are going on, I got a serger for my birthday, which I was excited about. And so I will be dipping my toes into the world of garment makings. Now, don't worry, I'm not abandoning quilting. I will be sticking with quilting very much and I'm not making garment sewing videos, famous last words, but I do quite fancy trying my hand at making clothes. So, you know, making a shirt, making a hoodie. So I've got some patterns and I'm just trying to find some fabric. And then I've been watching YouTube videos, learning how to use a serger because it's, it's completely different, obviously, the way that it works uh, from a normal sewing machine. So it takes a bit of getting used to. So keen to kind of practice a bit on scrap fabrics and stuff like that before diving into making something and ending up chopping things into pieces. I'm also going to be doing some work with curtains in the house. We have curtains that need to be taken up. I have curtains that I would like to put some thermal linings on. I haven't taken up curtains before, so it's going to be interesting. I'm learning how to do a blind hem stitch on the sewing machine because I'm not sewing them by hand. Learning how to unpick an existing lining and replace it with thermal lining. It looks easy in a video. I'm sure it's not, but I'm willing to give it a shot. And you know, as long as the thread is hidden, it should be okay. And it, I don't know, we'll find out. But generally, I am just feeling a bit of a renewed energy and a renewed excitement around sewing and making videos. What I've been discovering is that making my videos, they take a long time. And if you speak to anybody that makes tutorials on YouTube that doesn't have a production company and people to edit and do all their cutting for them and their prep, so they just walk up and stand in front of the camera and talk, it takes a lot of time. You know, if I'm doing a pattern, it takes me a good five or six hours to write the pattern and then set all the pattern up and design it and then cut and sew and film and make sure I've got all the right angles and all the bits that I need for the step by steps and then pull it all together and then edit it and then do all the publicity. It does take an awful lot of time, but I really do enjoy it. And I do enjoy all these individual steps because they're all things that I really like doing. I'm kind of figuring that out. I'm quite pleased because I have so many ideas and so many things that I want to do. I just feel like some of the parts hold me back from putting things out quickly, but I'm getting there and that will be hopefully starting to 
allowed me to speed up and get more videos out. But the videos will still have the great quality and the great content that you keep telling me that you all love. So I am hopeful that's gonna work out well. And yes, I might have to drop some of my OCD perfectionist vibes because sometimes I'm editing a video and my ambitions are way bigger than my video editing skills. And I do think I'm a fairly decent video editor. I am definitely not an expert in video editing. I know enough to be dangerous, as people say, but I do think I'm fairly good at it and have a fairly good eye for it. But sometimes I still do sit down and I want to do this and this and animate and all that. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. So it stops me because my perfectionist is like, well, if you can't do it like that, don't do it until you can do it but that's stupid because then I don't do it because I'm not going away and learning how to do it so either I need to make a plan to learn how to do these things or I just need to say no do it to the best that I can edit it to the best that I can and put the video out because as long as the audio is good and as long as you can see what's going on and have an idea of what I'm doing then that's all that really matters it doesn't need big Hollywood special effects and green screens and all that stuff it just needs to be easy to follow and clear and simple instructions that you can understand so I'm getting over that getting on with it, then that's really going to allow me to start putting out all these videos that I keep telling you about that I'm excited about doing that you keep thinking, well, where are they, Tom? Where, what, what have you done with them? I can't quite believe that it's almost halfway through October at the time of filming this. I haven't even begun to think about my Christmas sewing yet, which means probably not going to be doing very much. I do have an idea for a hexagon Christmas tree a skirt. Um, we have a really thin, tall Christmas tree that goes in our kitchen and I'd like to make a little skirt for it because it has loads of cables that are all messy at the bottom and I'd love to hide them, but it's a really strange size. And I've discovered that all the Christmas skirt patterns are huge, so like 50 plus inches. Now I just need something that's probably only about 15 or 16 inches across, but these patterns, it's really difficult to scale them down to make something so small, so I'm gonna have to just write my own. And I would love to have been able to have the time to write it and release it as a video, but I don't quite think it's going to happen. So I might just do a vlog for you talking about how I did it and kind of sharing the sizes. And if you're able to figure it out from that, then you can go ahead and make yours. And then I got this whip that I started last Christmas that is waiting to be quilted. It's like hexagons cut in half, so it has odd angles that I haven't done binding for before. So I just need to go and figure out how to do that. And it's those little things that because I don't know how to do it, I'm kind of putting it off doing it. But, you know, I just I just need to get on with it and just do it because it will look lovely on our Christmas table. So I'll pop a picture in so you can see what I'm talking about. That will hopefully be finished in time for Christmas. And I think that's probably all the Christmas sewing I'll be doing is a skirt and finishing that table runner. I don't plan on making any gifts for Christmas this year. If I do give quotes for gifts, I'll probably take them from my pile that's sitting here um, and just quilt them and bind them because they're already made. So we'll see, but the, yeah, my focus is on other quilting projects. So yeah, there is lots of stuff coming up and there is lots of stuff coming up because it's in progress. So keep an eye out for my first skill builder pattern, which I hope you will like. Keep an eye out for designs 8, 9, 10 and 11 of This Is How You Quilt It the rest of this year. And then keep an eye out for the other two skill builders, sewing room organisational vlog, the Christmas tree skirt vlog if I do do it, and maybe a vlog about making garments if I finally get around to doing that as well. So yeah, so lots of things on the horizon. September was a good month though, I was so pleased to get back to sewing. I do have to say as well, I got so many wonderful comments from the community. Uh, on Instagram and on YouTube. Such wonderful kind words from everybody that were just such a joy to sit and read. So thank you so much to everybody that took the time to leave comments and share feedback and good thoughts with me. I do really appreciate it all. So yeah, that's my September update. So if you did enjoy this video, it would really help my channel out if you would give it a thumbs up. Why not consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified when all those videos that I've been talking about are coming out. But yes, I am so grateful to you all for watching my videos and for the comments and I am so glad to be finding time to getting back to my sewing. So I hope you have an amazing day, whatever you are doing. You take very good care of yourself and I will see you soon.